Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is a what sold, and this is actually uh, items that sold on eBay. I'm gonna have a video in a couple days of high dollar items that sold on Poshmark. So for the most part, most of these items are over $45 um, in sale price. So this video is gonna be 25 items that sold on eBay within the last few weeks. This is not all my sales. I have an average sale price of about $25. So for every $100 item, I'm also selling occasionally a five or $10 item. So it all balances out. But I think it's, um, you guys seem to like when I share some of the high dollar items that are selling for me. Maybe these are some new brands. Maybe these are brands that you've found before. Um, and yeah, so let's just jump right in. If you aren't subscribed, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And as always, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, let me know, I appreciate it. All right, so in no particular order, um, I have 25 items. I am gonna pop in, I feel like I should move. <laughs> I am gonna pop in some pictures so that you can see. If you wanna see pictures of labels, if you wanna see how I write descriptions, um, I do show labels in all my haul videos, uh, but for time's sake of editing and also time's sake of the video, I am just gonna pop up the main picture, but you can check out my Poshmark closet or eBay store, actually in this case, eBay store, um, to see my solds and um, if you wanna see any more information, it's all there. So um, yeah, let's just, all right, so 25 items. This was uh, gross sales of $1,534. If you remove the fees, which a couple of these items were promoted um, and eBay fees are a little bit less than Poshmark. So I just took, just to be easy, I just took 20% off and that comes out to $1,227 in net profit. Um, and then if you remove the cost of goods, so my average cost of goods is about $5 per item. So when you remove that, it brings it down to $1,102 and that's profit basically before I pay any taxes of just like income taxes and stuff. So anyways, yeah. Um, so the first one is a sweater that is by a designer named Anne Fontaine. She, um, I've sold a couple of her items. I don't find her that often, but I've had the sweater for a while. I want to say I've had the sweater for about nine months and I priced high, uh, but it sold for full price. <laughs> so all these sales, um, a couple of these I'm actually need to ship out today. Today is Monday when I'm filming this. Um, so this one actually sold this weekend, but yeah, it sat for a long time. I thought maybe I priced too high. It did have some, a little bit of interest, but I'm happy if something sits and sells for $90. So, and all the eBay sales, they did pay set shipping separately. So, all right. Um, the next item is a Vince leather jacket. Now I bought this recently, probably about a month ago. And I did, I did pay up for it. I want to say it was about, it ran about $10. Um, and you know, but I also buy items for a dollar. So that's where I get that average sale price is right around that $5 mark. But this, when I got it under the lights, I noticed there was some discoloration on the sleeve, one of the sleeves, like maybe it had been in a closet and it had some sunlight or whatever. Um, I noted it, I tried to, to take clear photos and um, that's also was sold this weekend. So I think I did it backwards. So these first few are actually my more recent sales, but uh, that sold for $65 and a uh, really beautiful color in my opinion. I obviously love green um, and I was excited to find it. And even with that, that flaw, I, pr I think I priced about 99. And when I got the offer of 65, I was definitely happy with that. So um, even with the flaw, it was definitely worth the pickup. All right, the next uh, item is a pair of pants that I also recently got probably about a month ago. Um, uh, it's by a designer named Kadem Sasan. Um, I want to say it was an Israeli designer. I might be mixing up. I've got, I've picked up quite a few new designers recently, but, um, this was a pair of pants kind of with that lagging look. So kind of oversized, um, wide leg cropped comfort, uh, lagging look. If you aren't familiar with the term is, is it Diane Keaton? That's kind of known for her lagging look style. Just, um, it's a lot of very trendy, wealthy women wear this style. I don't know if that's the, like, best way to describe it, but that's how I envision it. But um, anyways, these sold within a month for $65 and those are also um, going out today. All right, next up is a jacket. This was by a brand called Carbon 38. Uh, this is the first time I found this brand. And I think some of you guys said in the comments that you had some good luck with this brand. This actually sat for a few months. I thought maybe I priced too high. Uh, but, and I, and I got an offer, I want to say I priced about 74 and I got an offer for 50. Um, and since it had been sitting, sitting a few months, I decided to accept still a good return. And, um, 
yeah. All right, next two are two Eileen Fisher sweaters. They sold uh, together to the same person, but they both sold for a decent amount because they were, it was a full price sale. So uh, the first one is a, a striped sweater. I believe both of these were XL. Uh, this was a striped sweater tunic. I was actually planning on wearing this possibly <laughs> this fall winter. It probably was a little big, but over like leggings, it was just really cute and comfortable. Um, but this sold for $59. And then the next one was a blue sweater that I got more recently. So the striped one I've had for probably about uh, four to five months. The blue sweater I've only had for a few weeks and the blue sweater sold for $49. So I like picking up Eileen Fisher. There are some factors to consider. Would I pick up every Eileen Fisher? No, um, the material, the size, style, some of that factors in, but I would say depending on price, especially for a dollar, I'll pick up almost all Eileen Fisher that's in good condition and I'll pay full price for things better size, linen, a, a really great style that's not super basic. Um, so the blue sweater, I believe I paid a dollar for, the striped sweater I paid full price for. So um, here we go with my hands again. Um, next up is a pair of boots. I picked these up a couple months ago and I was worried because I picked them up. I didn't notice that it almost looked like a chihuahua I had chewed on the leather in a couple spots. It was very minor. Uh, the brand is Patois, Patog, I, ah, I feel like I should just write it. I know, I know some of you guys are listening and you like when I say things, but it's P-A-T-A-U-G-A-S. Um, it's really hard to go on the internet and mispronounce a whole bunch of things. So that's awkward, but these sold for $49, even with the flaw, these were actually an international purchase. So they did pay quite a bit extra in shipping. Um, I want to say this was a Spanish brand. So I'm, maybe that's why it's uh, more popular in the international market, but it still sold for $49 in a reasonable amount of time even with the flaw. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right. Next up is a bag that I also got a couple months ago. This was a Dooney and Burke bag. It had an adorable bumblebee print all over it. It had a long removable crossbody strap and then it had the, the two handles. Absolutely adorable. Um, I knew when I saw this that I just had to get it because I knew it needed to find a new home. Um, so this took about a month to sell and, uh, yeah, it sold for $59 and 25 cents. All right, next up, this one I actually think I forgot to put in a haul. I'm pretty sure because it sold so quickly. This was a Free People New Attacks bodysuit. I believe the original price on this was like 60 something, like 64 or something. Um, and so I priced it 44 because it had this star print all over it. It was long sleeve. I've had a lot of decent luck with bodysuits recently, not just Free People, but just in general. And uh, it was new with tags. So I priced at 44. It sold in a day for full price. Um, so that's why it never ended up in a haul. I try to insert those in on hauls, but then sometimes I forget. So I was really happy with that sale. I did pay, I want to say about $5 for it. Um, and I don't typically pay full price for a free people item unless I really like it. But this was new with tags and the star print was just adorable. So, all right, next up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this pair of pants. So a pair of Lululemon men's pants, I'm sorry, I'm dramatic, but um, this is the third time I've sold this, this exact pair of pants. So they were returned twice for fit and I have returns on eBay. I think my return rate is two or 3%. It's very minor, the buyer pays shipping. So it is a bit of a hassle that I have to um, like process a return, you know, put it back in inventory and that type of stuff. Relisting is super easy on eBay, so that's not a big deal. But um, the first person, they said, it's a slim fit pant. And I put that in the description and they're like, oh, slim fit is not for me. So clearly they were just, you know, it wasn't a style they were familiar with. The second person returned them and I'm like, oh gosh, for fit. I think they were a size 38, but again, a slim fit. So the third offer came in and it wasn't even an offer. They paid full price, $59. Um, right. Yeah. $59. And I think they all sold for slightly different prices, but whatever. So sold for $59 before shipping the item. I decided to reach out to the person and I said, can you please confirm the measurements? I didn't say, Hey, this item has been returned twice. Um, but I basically said, this is a, a slim fit pant to avoid any returns and you know, that might cost money. Um, because again, the buyer would pay both the shipping there and the return shipping. Um, you know, can you just please confirm that you know this style and you're comfortable with the style and this is what you're looking for? And they said, yep, I've worn this, great. So I shipped it off. It's been a few weeks. I mean, I still have, I think my returns are 30 days. So 
they still have time to return if they wanted to, but hopefully by me sending that message, uh, they won't return it and uh, hopefully it worked out. But man, I don't, I think that's the first for me where something's been returned twice and I'm selling it a third time. So, all right, next up is an Orvis. This is the Zambezi jacket is the style name. Um, this I saw at not a Goodwill, it was like a hole in the wall place. And I think I only paid about $5 for it but it was a really like structural, structural kind of men's jacket. It had some leather pockets and um, areas. It definitely had more of that like safari look. Orvis has been sold at Costco. So I typically avoid the brand because I, I, I just don't even, I, I just don't have the patience to figure out what's Costco and what's not. Um, but when a brand starts being sold at Costco, I typically try to avoid it like Chaser. Um, unless it's a cute graphic tee, I'll avoid that because it's been sold at, at, at Costco and it just means it's, it's been sold for super cheap new. So Orvis, but when I saw this jacket, I was like, no, this has to be worth something. So I picked it up. It sold within a few days for $51 and 80 cents. Definitely a great return. Um, and yeah, sometimes you just have to run with it. I don't even think I looked up comps for that in the store, but I don't recommend that for everyone. <laughs> um, all right, next up is a barefoot dreams robe. This was new with tags. It still had the Nordstrom tag on it. It was purple, it was a size two, um, and it was kind of more of the longer robe like you would find in a hotel. So that sold uh, within a day for $55. And um, yeah, I, I know I paid full price for that, but definitely worth it. All right, next up was one of my favorite items that I thrifted. I think I said in the haul video, this was a, from a few months ago, I think I said that if I were to get married, I would I would find a dress similar to this. It was kind of a, a mini dress, long sleeve, lace, cream, had a full zipper up the back. It was Diane von Furstenberg, which is a great designer with very mixed comps. Um, and it, I think this was a size two, it was small, but I absolutely loved it. And I know a couple of people on that video commented that they actually wore it for their wedding. So I was, cause I, I don't know, I just envisioned like casual weddings and that just, you know, no shoes, that type of stuff. So anyways, this finally sold for $45. I knew I wasn't going to get too much. The comps for this exact dress were not um, extraordinarily high, but I was so glad to see it sold because it was just one of my favorite thrifted items. All right. Next up was an oddball item that I picked up a couple months ago. It was a vintage. The, the, the name of the designer was Lilia Suti, S-U-I-T-Y. I don't know if, that, if that's how you pronounce it, but uh, this was a like a cowgirl dress or like a rodeo dress or a Western dress. It did have a hole at the bottom of the hem at the back, um, which I noted and I priced accordingly. It still sold within a couple months for $51. And I, yeah, I think it even sold closer to like that month mark. So it did have quite a bit of interest. Um, and yeah, sometimes taking those risks really pays off. And listing things with flaws, I have learned people will buy things with flaws. Don't hesitate to acknowledge it, um, clear photos, you know, being clear in the description that there's a flaw. Um, but this one, I feel like anyone that could do a basic sewing job could just basically hem it up a little bit and it would be fine. All right, uh, next up is a John Barbados shirt. This was a basic black button front shirt. Uh, I believe it was like a cotton. It was very soft. It was, but the reason I picked it up was it was an XXL and I've had decent luck with John Barbados. Uh, and it sold very quickly within a couple days for $44. And yeah, it's not super exciting, but I love uh, just some of those, those things that I'm just confident in because I've sold them a number of times. That's kind of how John Barbados is for me. Now I've sold t-shirts for $15 or $15, $20. So, you know, it's, it's a spectrum, but it is, usually a pretty good selling brand for men's items for me. All right, next up, I took a really low offer on this and it's possibly because I priced too high, um, but it was by a designer named Morgane Le Fay. It's M-O-R-G-A-N-E Le Fay. Uh, and it was this black dress. It had this ruffly, it was like pinched in places. So it was kind of bubbly. Uh, my descriptions are on point today. Um, it was new with tags and I believe the original price was $1,100. It was, it did have a markdown written of 500 and something dollars, but it's a very expensive, uh, brand. So I priced it, I believe at 249. 
Now, anytime I get an offer for less than 50% of my asking price, I decline um, just automatically. And I would say half of the time they come back and offer something better. Now I could counter, but honestly, I just, it's a, just an easy marker for me. If it's below 50%, just decline it. If they're really interested, they'll come back with a better price. And it just make, keeps things sim simple for me. Uh, this dress, however, when I got that hundred dollar offer, I was like, this has been listed for probably close to like eight, eight or nine months. It was before, uh, COVID and I priced, I, I don't, I don't know where I got my comps from. I think I looked on the real real cause I couldn't find any that had at the time when I listed it that had sold recently on eBay. Um, it seemed like an unusual brand, so I didn't know the demand, but because it had been sitting a hundred dollars on any item that I pick up for approximately $5 is going to be an amazing return. So at the end of the day, there are times when I go against my typical, usually with those high dollar items, I will sometimes just cave and take something a little lower because it's still a great return. And I just kind of keep that in perspective. Um, so yeah, it's sold for a hundred dollars. I don't know if I said that, but all right, next up was a caftan. I picked up, all, I want to say like four vintage caftans, loved them all. And the only, I only one? No, there's two that have sold. This was the second one. Um, this sold, it was by a, uh, a woman named Ruth Norman. Some of her stuff I believe was sold at some of the higher end department stores. Um, I picked up two of her stuff and the one that I thought was going to sell quickly that has a lot of watchers and likers still is listed. This one I absolutely loved. It was pink, blue, very like geometric. Um, this sold for $86 and 80 cents and it took a couple weeks to sell. So all right, next up is a jacket by Eileen Fisher. This, I believe, was a size 14. It was gray. It was simple. It has been listed for a while. I want to say close to that, like, eight or nine-month mark. Um, I just think of, I just, I feel like I should just say pre-COVID, which could be, like, you know, a year to two years old, but whatever. Um, anyway, so this sold for $49. It was a good size, and it, yeah. All right, next up was a beta brand sweater. This was the, the, the style of it was called the Black Sheep. When I picked it up, I was new with tags and I was like, oh, beta brand, all right. I picked up a dress by beta brand, brand the same day. That also sold for 30 something dollars very quickly. But this sweater, when I got home and I looked up comps, I was like, wow, these things are selling for, you know, it's, a, it's still listed on their site for, I wanna say 150, 160. Um, I, I think I priced it 115 or something around there, uh, just below other, other listed items. And I got an offer for $85 and it sold within a day. So, um, yeah, definitely this sweater was in high demand. I priced just under other people, um, and it sold very quickly and the dog is grunting. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up is a Johnny was embroidered top. This sold within a, a week, a week. Um, and it sold for $50. It was black. It had some embroidery on the bottom. Johnny was for me can go usually anywhere from 50 to a hundred for most items. I have, uh, I did pick up something and it didn't have that great of comp. So it is a brand I still look up. Um, but usually they're very boho embroidered stuff tends to be a decent seller. And so, yeah. All right, next up is a pair of flare jeans by J Brand. Now, J Brand is a brand that I pass on 90% of the time. It's a brand I also wear, so I do like it. It's sold at high-end department stores and higher-end boutiques. Uh, you know, the retail price of a lot of their stuff is, you know, around the 150 mark, so 100 to uh, 200 mark. And so it is an expensive jean brand or a good quality jean brand. It just has very inconsistent comps. However, I've sold this exact pair of flare jeans. It's called the Love Story. Um, twice now for both really great returns. So this time it sold for $49. I can't believe what it sold. Uh, I don't remember what it sold for the first time, but I know it was probably close to that $49 mark. Um, so yeah, so, you know, with certain brands, it's still uh, worth looking up certain items. These were really super black, like they had not been washed very often. Um, and I've had some decent luck with flair recently. So all right, next up was a pair of bell bottom jeans, <laughs> similar. Uh, this was a first time finding this designer, New York designer named Judy Rosen. She has a store in New York that she's known for her denim. Um, and I, they sold very quickly within a day or two for $75. Um, and yeah, I would, and these also had 
um, fraying at the back of the hem, which I just noted. Uh, bell bottoms that tend to be longer tend to have some wear at the back of the hem, but I knew the comps were really great. So $75 for that, definitely A-OK -okay by me. All right, next up is a pair of Fry Heath boots was the style. I actually picked these up in my small town and I know people comment because I do source in LA, but I do live two hours away from LA. Um, I live in a very, very rural town. And so I actually found these fry boots in my small town. Now I did pay up for them. I want to, I want to say I paid $15 for them at a little small thrift, but, um, I do, I can feel everyone's pain if you live in a small town or an area where you don't feel like you find great brands. Um, uh, but I focus a lot more on vintage items or Western stuff because that's what I can find in my, in my, my rural area. Uh, these sold for $108 and they only took a couple weeks to sell. So definitely not all fry has done well for me, but, um, this was, yeah, just a good pair of boots. All right, next up, only two more. <laughs> I feel like this is a long one. Uh, next up was a really unusual. I found this brand twice now. I've sold it this one time. Um, I did get an, uh, some low offers on the t-shirt that I have with this brand, but it's Cloney and the Crew. So Cloney is K-L-O-N-I um, and the Crew. When I looked it up, I couldn't find any comps when I found both of these. I found them within a couple weeks of each other. And, but when you look up retail, it's like, wow, this stuff is selling in the multiple hundreds. Like it's an expensive brand. So I didn't really know how to price. And sometimes it's just easy to go high. Um, I can't, I want to say I priced these probably around that 70-ish, 74, 79 mark. Uh, but I got an offer for $50. They have been sitting for seven, eight months. So I decided to take that uh, $50 for a pair of pants. And I know, I'm pretty sure I found these on a dollar a day. So um, yeah, all A-OK -okay by me. Last up is a free item I got from a family member. I got a whole bunch of suits. Um, and this was a Tahari skirt suit. This sold for $48. This actually is the second time this suit sold. Uh, the first time they returned it for fit. And um, so, and this one sold a few weeks ago and I haven't heard anything. I think there was positive feedback on this one. So anyways, um, yeah, skirt suits are not my favorite. I have still have quite a few listed from that were free, but I also have sold quite a few. And I really embrace that free stuff from family and friends these days, just because even when I can source, there's really nothing better than free. So anyways, $1,500 in a few weeks. That's not all my sales. These are just my top dollar sales. Um, keep in mind, I do have low dollar sales and um, I think it's just more focusing not on each individual item, but more focusing on the average sale price and, um, and keep listing. That's my goal. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, there will be the Poshmark sales of about 15 items that were $1,000 in a couple days. So, you know, stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.